Dear viewers, welcome to this episode of Your Life, Your Mind. I have been puzzled to see the kind of business the insurance companies are building on year after year. In spite of bad mouthing of insurance product, the business of insurance companies is on the rise. It's just not the ordinary rise. They are going through a massive rise. The products churned out from the insurance companies are becoming popular day after day. In spite of so much of a bad mouthing of these products by the fintech companies, fin influencers, the mutual fund distributors and various other parts of the finance industry, the insurance products are continuing to gain more acceptability. What is the thing which is driving the insurance company's business? Why these products are becoming so popular? Is there anything for you to look into it? All these things I am going to discuss in this video. Stay till the end of the video. I will discuss some of the very fine points about the insurance products here. This is NRI Money Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan Bhatt, your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. In the last many years, the insurance company business is constantly on the rise. It's just not the volume of business which is on the rise, but the quality of the business is also on the rise. The quality of the business of insurance companies can be measured from the persistency of the policy. A persistency of the policy is the person who buys the policy comes back and pays the premium in future years. For some reason, if he feels that he has been missold and this policy is not good for him, then the obvious route he takes is stopping the payment of that policy. But the persistency of policies across companies is improving and it is improving to such an extent which proves to the point that the policy holders are feeling that they have a good genuine product. And this message just cannot be missed out. The first quarter of 24-25, the insurance company saw a humongous amount of growth, a growth of more than 25% unheard of. What is that the insurance companies are doing? Why these products are becoming so popular? What is driving their growth? Let us check into it a little bit more in detail and find an answer for this observation. The first reason why insurance products are becoming popular or the insurance companies churning out so much business is insurance companies are catering to customers need but they are not creating a greed in the minds of the people look at the contrast the fintech companies the fin influencers are all telling you to get highest return to think that you can reduce your expenses what does the insurance company product is doing it is trying to solve a problem it is trying to attend to the needs of the people. People have a need. They need money at some point of time. People have a demand for a defined benefit. People have life goals. Every product which comes from insurance companies attends to one of the needs. Just imagine or look at their uh, advertisements that is going on. Look at that advertisement from HDFC Life. Sir Uthake Geo. How catchy it is. It says, you are going to retire. You are no more a normal person. You don't have an income, but during your retirement, you maintain your lifestyle. Don't extend your hand for help in front of your children, state or charity. And that appeals to the general public. Look at that advertisement from LIC of India. Zindagi ke saath bhi, zindagi ke baad bhi. How catchy it is. There is a perceived need. There is a latent need. When you articulate that position, the customer on the other side understand that he has a need and he requires this particular product. Classic difference between an insurance company and the rest of the constituents of the finance industry is insurance company caters to the need whereas the other sector creates a greed in them. The other reason is the insurance companies have built a sales force across the length and breadth of the country. It's just not the geographical distribution. Today, the LIC plus the private players put together the total amount of food soldiers they have to distribute their product is in excess of 10 lakhs. It's just not the 10 lakh food soldiers that they have. But all these food soldiers have a viable business model. For having come to this distribution industry, they are very sure that they can lead a good life by getting into this particular profession. That gives the confidence. That gives them a survivability over a longer period of time. They are closer to the customer. 
customers and this creates a business. Why general public trust the insurance companies and its sales force is because of two prominent reasons. One I already told you the insurance companies cater to the real needs of achieving certain life goals be it retirement, be it creating wealth, be it creating the second income, be it funding the children's education or giving them some compensation in the unfortunate event of breadwinner die. All these things are the needs of the people. That is what the insurance companies will cater to. What is that the sales force is catering to? The sales force will complement the human shortcomings on the policyholder side. See, people are not disciplined generally. So people are required to be made disciplined. They need to be followed up for payment of premium. They need to be told about availability of product. They need to be told about what is good for them, what is not good for them. All these are human requirements. The policyholders don't have the bandwidth or the required knowledge or required interest to look into it. Likewise, if you say, I have to build a portfolio for them, they may not know what, what a portfolio looks like. But if you say you save this money, at certain point of time, you get so much of a money. If something were to happen to you, you have a recourse to so much of a money. All these things will become very appealing. So they save money and the fund management is taken care of by the insurance company. They have a trustworthy person by their side, which is the sales force. And these people have been working with them for years together. They know this person that they know that this person will not just disappear. He is there and he will collect the premium or he'll help them pay the premium when the new products come he will come and tell them and he understand the policy holders to the core what is his cash flow when he has got the money what can suit him all these things are known to the policy holder so the foot soldiers bridge this gap of human shortcomings that are there in the uh, policy holders insurance companies cater to the needs it becomes a very appealing business case on the contrary let us look at the business model of fintech companies, fin influencers and others in the finance industry. Now look at the mutual fund industry. At regular intervals of time, they keep on churning new fund offers. Is there a new fund offer to come into the market? The answer is no. Even the regulator has taken note of it. See, when a lot of mis-selling happens in the mutual fund industry, recently I saw a report where the SEBI came down heavily on the AMCs too, where he said that if mis-selling happens, AMCs are also equally responsible. You keep churning out the NFOs, your distribution force goes to the customer, asking them to subscribe for it. Suppose if it is not suitable for a customer, it's just not the distributor who is responsible for it. The manufacturer is equally responsible for this. Look at the fintech companies. What do they cater to? What's their product? They don't have a product. They have a service and they say you're going to save so much of an expense. There are fintech companies. The moment they see a regular uh, fund being bought, they say expense noticed. The only thing that you do is you save the expense. So you don't cater to the needs of the people. You create that greed or you kickstart the greed in an individual. But remember, these emotions will not last long. Need is a much stronger emotion. That is why people go to the insurance companies again and again and again. So there is fundamentally, there is something wrong with the fintech companies. This is my firm belief. A company cannot work unless it has profits. They also need to explain to the general public, if I am saving you the expense, if I am doing this business without taking anything from you, where is the money that is coming from? So the business needs profit. If you are doing it without the profit, where is your profit coming from? The profit is coming from the unwanted things, the unwanted things of trading, getting the brokerage, luring the customer with something that they don't need and getting all the customer onto your platform with the lure of saving expense and exposing them to unwanted things. I don't want to single out anyone, but by and large, this is a business model they are working with. So it will not last long. In one of the videos I have spoken, it is a young crowds which will fall to the fintech companies. But when they mature, when they move towards 35, 50 years age band, slowly the do-it-yourself crowd keeps coming down and they gravitate towards the financial planners for the requirement of what they need to do with their finances. Insurance companies fill the gap between the bank fix and deposits and the mutual funds. There is a wide gap between these two. A fix and deposit caters to the safety of the capital. However, the returns are nominal or will get 1% over and above the inflation. Mutual funds on the other side will give you a higher rate of return, at least 3 to 6% over in the bank 
FD rate. However, they are very volatile. They cannot be dependent. You need a professional assistance to handle your mutual fund portfolio. While the returns from mutual fund is very attractive, it requires professional handling. Handling of a bank fix and deposit is easier. However, it doesn't give the desired rate of return. The investors want something in between. They want the safety of the capital. They don't want the messy affair of creating the portfolios, constantly following it upon them and frequent posting of these NFOs and kind of a thing. So they are worried. So they need something. If I can get something more than the bank fixed deposit, if I am able to save some taxes, if it can inculcate some discipline in me, if it can add certain other benefits to me, the customer will quickly get hooked onto it. Bank fixed deposits don't give a large chunk of return for you. However, believe it or not, more than three-fourths of the people's savings are in the fixed deposit. As long as a person is prepared to trust the bank FD, he has every reason to subscribe for something which gives him the safety of the bank FD at the same time something over and above the bank fixed deposit. And that segment is well captured by the insurance industry. Insurance companies are very good in identifying the unsaturated needs in the society. One of the biggest unsaturated needs felt worldwide is the need of a defined benefit during the retirement days. Everybody is quite known that during his retirement days, the situation is not going to be like what it is today. Gone are the days of giant families, people are in profession. These days, the families live alone, children move to some other place. Only thing that they want is a defined payout of money. Nobody is asking you today how much return I'm going to get. The question they ask is, will I get a defined payout? How much is the money I will get? How long I can get? Will I get it till the day I die? What if I am survived by a spouse? Will her interest be taken care of? These are the genuine questions people ask. The insurance companies are churning out product to answer this question. That is why they are becoming very attractive. People flock to the insurance companies as they know that their needs will be catered. Insurance solve two other problems. It's not two problems. There are many problems it will solve. But the major two problems it will solve is, number one, I don't like to pay the taxes. I am on constant search for product which can give me the tax break. There are many products in the insurance industry which gives you handsome tax efficient return. Take the case of ULIPS, up to 2.5 lakh per person per year, you can park it and you can save the 12.5% long-term capital gains tax. It's not a small amount of money. While the finance industry is talking about half a percentage saving that they can do, 12.5% tax saving is a huge gain. Likewise, you have in this guaranteed return insurance plan, which are giving you the same return as a bank FD today, will take out two problems. The problem of reinvestment risk, the problem of taxation. You don't need to pay any taxes if your contribution is 5 lakh per person per year. Who doesn't want it? Let's say that these products are giving an IRR of today of 6.5%. If your contribution is just 5%, it amounts like you are putting the money at a 10% taxable FD rate. Let's say that you have an FD which gives you 10% and you are at a 30% tax bracket. Take out the 30% plus the says 33%. The post-tax return of a taxable FD at 10% is just about 6.5%. These products are giving you today. The other problem I spoke is the reinvestment risk. In case of an FD, you can lock for only 10 years. Here you get into this product, pay one installment and pay the rest over the agreed premium payment period. For rest of your life, you get the same rate of interest. When you talk to a customer, he understands this equations very well and he comes and subscribe to the insurance product. One another problem the insurance products solve is people want to do retirement. People want to save for some life goal. Question that is there in their mind is what if I die? What if I suffer from a critical illness? What if I am not able to pay for this plan? How will my contribution come from? How will my family survive? The insurance companies will add an insurance cover on it or they will add a, a premium waiver benefit on it. In case if you are not able to make the payment for reasons beyond your control, like death or critical illness, the insurance company itself pays those premium. Who doesn't want that benefit? When the sales force articulates this position, the customer gets convinced and he buys into it. When I speak all these things in front of you, you may get a feeling that I am giving the sugary side of the insurance company. I am telling you the truthful side of the insurance company. 
But does it mean to say that the insurance companies have nothing to hide about? Like everybody else, they have their quota of problem. At one point of time, the ULIFs were pretty bad. We have also spoken about the ULIFs of the year 2010 and before. They were very bad. There were problems even in the distribution industry in the insurance sector as well. But insurance also has a regulator and regulator is very proactive here. Every time a complaint has come, be it the mis-selling, be it the charges, be it the products which does not have the required amount of surrender value, regulator sits up, listens, applies correctly. What are the things the regulator has done? In the year 2010, they came out with a regulation to regulate the expense ratio of unit linked insurance plan. While earlier, the insurance company were fancifully putting an allocation charge of 5%, 10%, 30%, 100% in some cases. Now, insurance companies cannot have a expense ratio of more than 2.25% over a 10-year period. The method of computation could be slightly different, but for a long-term uh, plan, for more than 10 years, you can't have more than 2.25% of the expense. Thanks to the regulator for bringing all these changes. Likewise, the regulator is also worried about the commissions which gets paid to the distribution. So he is also thinking at this point of time and soon they will come up with the regulation to say the customer should have the maximum surrender values. This regulation is being worked out as I understand and it will see the light of the day very soon. In which case if there is a mis-selling or something like that happens, customer has a recourse to get the maximum money out without too much of a damage. However, in today's circumstances, in most products, the surrender values are quite a painful thing in case if something were to go wrong. On the other side, the insurance companies are also the mindful of the bad mouthing that happens with their products. They know what's happening and how the other side of the industry is breathing fire at their product. They, on their part, have also churned out products. They have innovated themselves beautifully well. While the mutual fund industry or other constituents of the finance industry go on bad mouthing the unit linked insurance policies, the way they have changed the ULIP policies today is mind blowing. Many people do not know there are ULIP plans today with zero allocation charges. There are ULIP plans today which are cheaper than the mutual fund. The ULIP plans have their tax advantage. The ULIPs are getting more and more attractive by the day and because of the bad mouthing, the insurance industry says thank you, you gave us a chance to innovate and they have churned out and these products are slowly getting popular more and more day after day. Even in the fixed income side, the kind of Product rollouts that have happened in the insurance industry is worth taking note of. The latest asset class within the insurance products is the guaranteed return insurance plan. Phenomenal product. They cater to the needs of saving on the taxes, creating a fixed income during your retirement, matching the current banking FD rate and taking out that reinvestment risk the retirees will go through. They have done a fantastic job. The problem of guaranteed return insurance plan has been that it will not beat inflation. No fixed income will beat inflation. That is given. The bank FD does not beat you know, inflation. It stays in line with inflation. However, they have innovated. Today, they have a graded payout kind of a products which they have brought under the guaranteed return insurance plan. The amount of research that is happening, the amount of thinking that is happening in the insurance company is mind-blowing and their ability to innovate and create very good products is here for all of us to see. All in all, this is a video to educate you, to see what's happening around you, what's happening in the industry and how you can get benefited from the innovations that are coming in, from the changes that are coming in and how you can get benefited from this. Do not get carried away by what fin influencers say, what fintech companies say, what your colleagues, friends say. A rational way to approach a particular problem is if you are approached by someone with an insurance product, listen to him, ask him the question see whether it has any value for it see whether it caters to any of your life needs if you find a value there is nothing wrong if you buy a product from the insurance company 
just because from an insurance company don't treat it as something of a social tab dear viewers hope the video that i have done today helped you to understand what's happening in the insurance companies why they are churning out so much of business is there a value for you to latch on to all these points if it helped you to take a view on the business of these insurance companies do give me a thumbs up if you are somebody who is yet to subscribe for this channel please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon do not forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones friends and relatives and on all the social media and whatsapp groups on which you are connected with thank you very much for watching this episode on nra money clinic i shall be back with you with yet another thought on your life your money next friday till then stay safe jai hind press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel